is in the eye of the beholder. So um, you have different types of physique. So which kind of physique do you like? You know, you have your Frank Zane kind of, maybe that's more like Michelangelo's David or something. And then you've got myself, maybe it's more like a Hercules type physique. So you've got different types of physiques. And uh, there is no perfect physique because you can find a fault with everybody. You can find a fault with my physique or Ronnie's or Lee Haney's or Arnold's. You always find some fault. So I don't think perfection really exists. We're just trying to get as close as we can to it. Um, but there'll always be there'll always be a flaw that you can find in anyone's physique. I would say they're, they're, they're correct because guys are chasing the size but they're not putting the work in so then they're, they're not looking the same as the guys that you know back in the day myself and Ronnie that were big but super hard and dense because we're you know we're hammering every day in the gym with with heavy weights and uh, people are taking a different approach now and they look bigger but softer and more watery and so on um, and of course uh, guys now have a lot of distended stomachs which maybe started in the 90s because we're getting bigger and bigger um, so yeah, maybe we're responsible for it. People trying to chase that, but not really being able to achieve it. So they're, they're, they're shooting for the size, but they're not shooting for the quality at the same time. And uh, I think with myself and Ronnie, we set the standard so high, it's very hard to do that. So we've almost taken a step back a little bit, in my opinion. I think you have to be a little bit crazy to be extremely good at anything, really, you know. The average mindset is not going to make you number one in anything, in business, in any kind of sport, in bodybuilding or anything. So you have to have an extraordinary amount of uh, determination and passion for what you're doing. Um, of course you have to have physical potential, but the guy that has the physical potential and the passion and the mental drive, then that's really when you've got a champion. And the guy, the guy with a bit more drive uh, often can beat somebody with more physical potential. So it's when you get all those factors coming together, that's when you get a champion that's outstanding, I think. Um, well, let's be frank, we're all professional bodybuilders who use steroids and there's some uh, possible health risks for that. Um, I wasn't worried about it, I was just being aware of it and uh, try to keep an eye on my health with, with blood tests and so on and stuff like that. Um, but I'll, I'll be honest, when I started, I, th I can't remember who said it to me, um, but they're like, you know, they're doing this, and, you know, maybe you're going to have health problems or maybe you're going to die young or something like that. But when you're 25, you don't give a shit. You know, when you're 25, you just want to be the best in the world and be Mr. Olympia. So when you get older, I think you start thinking about it more. Everyone when they're 25 thinks they're indestructible, you know, we, we all do crazy stuff, drive too fast, do, you know. When you get older, you start thinking about it. So now I probably think about it more. In fact, wow, I put my body under a lot of stress doing that. Um, but uh, I became the best of the world at what I'm doing. I'm known all around the world. I travel around the world, make a good living. Um, I totally changed the trajectory of my life through bodybuilding. So, you know, it's risk versus benefit ratio. And I always tell people that if they want to go down that road, that's up to them. But unless you're competing and you're making a living from it, is it worth it? For me, I would say no. That's up to the individual. But uh, that was one of the reasons why I was like, if I don't place top five in a first pro show, there's another reason why I wouldn't continue it, because I couldn't justify also the risks involved with that. Uh, old bodybuilders, narcissists. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, I always felt a bit removed from it. That's why I didn't need to show off for anybody or anything. It was almost like I had this statue that I was working on that was, wasn't me. It's my body, but it wasn't me. It was like I was removed from it and looking at it and like, I need to put more here, there are more there. And I want to take this finished statue to the gallery where all the art experts are and show them when it's finished. I don't want to unveil it until it's finished and I only care about what they think because the person on the street doesn't know about this artwork so for me that was it so I like to think I was not too narcissistic about it it was just a competition and I did what was required to win it 
but yeah, they, you have that part of the, the sport, of course, which is it's a bit of a turn-off for me, and it's much more apparent now than I think than it was back then, because people do it now just, just for the look. Uh, majority of people, for instance, that take steroids now, probably 95%, they're never going to do a competition. They just see it as a quick route to get what they want to get. Um, I was talking somewhere before and I'm like, you know, guys now with steroids is just a bit like women with breast implants or Botox. It's just a quick fix to get that look that you want to get and you think it's appealing and uh, it's a quick route to do it.